Uh, I'm going to be talking about sonification. So first, who I am. I'm Donnie Merson. That's me before I donated my hair. Um, and I'm from the University of Arizona, and I am a PhD student at the uh, School of Information. I'm also a programmer, uh, full stack developer by trade, and I'm doing my PhD in part time, and hopefully eventually we'll get through it. And what you're about to hear is what I'm going to do my thesis on. So the basic game plan for the next 10 minutes is what is sonification, in case you've never heard of this term before, and what are some of the problems around that, and what are some of the solutions to these problems, and how can sonification let us see more dimensions? And that's really the gist of what I, I'm really interested in, is being able to see more dimensions, not see with eyes, but actually perceive more dimensions simultaneously. And that's what I think we can do with sonification. And I'll talk a little about the end of my future re research, give you my email in case you're interested in being part of that research. So what is it? So first, let's think about visualization. What is visualization? Visualization is data turned into some kind of visual represent, representation. Uh, that's a tough word. I shouldn't have did multiple syllable words here right at the beginning. Um, <laughs> and now sonification is data turned into audible representations, right? So Wikipedia says, the sonification is the use of non-speech audio to convey information or perceptualized data. And part of me, right off the bat, wants to say, why do we care about that it's non-speech data? We could actually, speech data could be one more dimension that we put in there. Um, so sonification in real life, You've, you know about sonification, you just never realized it was sonification. So a Geiger counter is an example of sonification. So it's one dimensional data that you're walking around and it's telling you, gee, 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 and I apologize to whoever's captioning because there'll be lots of sound effects and stuff like that too. Um, <laughs> So there's that uh, heartbeat monitor. Once again, it's something that we, you can hear, and the rhythm will tell us whether or not there, I won't do the heartbeat. I know you're waiting for me to do that. But, uh, and then a radar. So radar is, has the sound once again. So these are ways that we can perceive information with sound. So these are sonification in real life. So advantages and disadvantages. So in visualization, the pro is you can see all the data at once. It's going to be the opposite for sonification, obviously. And it's a known entity. Ever since you were in grade school, you've been taught how to understand data in some kind of form, like a bar chart, a pie chart, or something like that. So the con is there's limited number of dimensions. There's really x, y, and kind of z, z.5 point, z point maybe. Um, and sonification, the pro is you can perceive multiple dimensions. And this is the part to me that's the most interesting. And I kind of came about it in a really weird way. So in a former life, I was a musician, and I was learning this, I was creating this uh, music theory, and I was trying to get all these dimensions that I was hearing musically and put them down on paper, and it finally hit me. It's like, wait, I'm going the wrong way. I can't put all these dimensions that I'm hearing, I can't hear, I can't talk about all these things on sound and then put them down on paper, because music notation is, is kind of weak in that way. And there's all these dimensions that I'm hearing that are not on the page when I put it down, so I decided, let's try to get it the other way. And if you're not 100% sure what I mean by all these different dimensions, let me give you an example. When I used to be a music teacher, I had a student, and he came in, and one of the things I do is I let people bring in their songs, and I would teach them music. And I came in, he was into punk rock, and I taught him some power chords, and he had his electric guitar, and he was playing the power chords. He, one day he came up to me and said, I, can you me, show me how they're doing it downstairs? I'm like, he was just playing what you were playing, but he didn't hear it that way. I finally realized what the problem was. Went out to my, my car, got my distortion pedal, put it in the distortion pedal, and he's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Because to him, it wasn't the tone that was the important, I mean, it was the tone that was the important part. It wasn't the actual pitch, right? He was hearing something that was more important to him that actually wasn't down on the music. So that's an example of uh, one of those uh, important dimensions that we don't hear. We, there's, you don't write down, I have a distortion, or I have a, um, uh, overdrive or chorus or something like that. You don't write that down on the written music. There's all these other dimensions that you hear and understand, but you don't do it. Problem is it's unknown entity. If you say sonification, most of you people probably never heard of sonification before you came today. Um, and you can't see the data all at once. So like a Geiger counter, you don't have a, a readout of all the data that you've seen as you've been walking around. So that's a problem. And there's the limited range of hearing. You can only hear so far. So there is going to be a mapping of that. So there's going to be a compression of that a lot of times if you can have really wide information. So multidimensional data. So what I mean by that is data with multiple <laughs> columns. 
So in visualizations, you'll see something like this. You have the two real dimensions, the x and the y, and then you have these ocular variables. And we have a few ocular variables. You see one of them right there, it's color. That color can let you understand what's going on here. You can't really see this. This is three type of biological entities, but you can see you have x and y. You see it's a positive correlation, and you see by color that these are related to these x and y variables very much so, right? Uh, another thing you do is pattern. So if you ever had like a heat map and sometimes they have some kind of scratch pattern that you would see. Uh, or another type of pattern would be like a, if you ever work with R and they always have the obligatory ggplot cars data and it has like triangles or circles as part of a dimension. And there's a size and something would be bigger and smaller and that can show another dimension of the data that you have. And there's faceting, which is basically taking a picture and doing it multiple times. So you have four dimensions that you see all at once. So sonification has lots of different things. For one thing, it's got pitch. So pitch is something that we hear right away. We can hear something, uh, and what pitch it is. And what we're really, really good at is hearing timbre or tone. We can tell the difference between a guitar and a piano instantly. We don't have to even think about it. It's just instant into our brain. Uh, rhythm. We have a good idea of basic rhythm. So like when we hear duh, 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 or duh, 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 we understand those are quickly different, right? And you can understand that. Once again, apologize to the captioner, because I'm kind of, <laughs> what does that come across? Duh, duh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And, and then there's harmony. So harmony is basically chords. It's a whole bunch of notes put together that ha end up having another uh, uh, quality to it. Uh, there's major and minor, like when you're first learning, like you think minor chords sound sad and ha major chords sound happy and stuff like that. And there's much, much more different types of harmony that's out there. And then there's melody. So we've been using melody all the time. So for example, you might hear something like, uh, da, 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 right? We know what's going to happen. John Williams has told us the good guys are about to do something, <laughs> right? And then if we hear, dun, 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 uh oh, here comes that guy. You know, the Darth Vader sound comes on, we have it. <laughs> it's like, that's a bit of data, just in case you weren't paying attention, you were falling asleep in your, in your chair in the movie theater, this is, this is what we got. So there, we have that ability. We have that ability to hear these things multiple times. We can hear if there's a Darth Vader theme in a different uh, uh, pitch. We uh, see a Darth Vader theme with a different instrument, maybe, and we could all of a sudden perceive multiple dimensions simultaneously. Uh, also, placement in the oral field. So we are very good, if you have headphones on, you can hear left, right, and center. Uh, in the old days, they used to use that a lot with stereo, where like, so one guy would be on the left, one guy would be on the right. Where actually, there's been studies, we actually are better at perceiving sound around us like that than we are with our eyes. So our oral field is actually really good. And there, there's people that are actually doing this right now. So if you ever heard the uh, song, New York State of Mind, there's an ABAA pattern used with, the, if you had the headphones on, that th with, there's A, B, so like a go left, right, left, 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 right, left, left in the, in the actual thing. So musicians already know it. They're already using it. They just kind of intuitively know it. They're not thinking about what that could actually mean. And there's echo. So we're really good at hearing echo. You can tell I'm in a, a room right now that's kind of big, or versus if I was in a stadium. You can tell when people are in a stadium, like if you've ever heard your favorite band in a rock stadium, you can understand that echo. We can hear that, we just don't have a, a way to talk about that at, right now. So the early experiments all used pitch to indicate size. So the data unfolds in time. So we think about the Geiger counter, the heartbeat monitor, the data's unfolding in time. And there's another one, if anyone's uh, interested in the gravity waves that were just discovered, the way that they're representing the data is through sonification. So it's just bloop. <laughs> um, <laughs> awesome. So um, that's one of the things they did. Um, so, but there's some problems. Uh, it's really only one dimensional, which is a big thing. And mapping the pitch, that's another problem that we'll have to figure out. But it also takes take away the multiple, it, we haven't really talked about the multidimensional attributes of it. And, it's a problem because most people who are not musicians can't hear the difference between small pitch changes, right? So you, you really, having something like that, you, you're kind of like excluding people who aren't musically trained. So this is where my research ideas come in. So I want to use soundification to expand the dimensions perceived. And I like to use it like with a mouse with a tooltip. So imagine, um, and also 
add more uh, dimensions visually. So imagine like a heat map, right? You have a heat map and you're like with your mouse, am I, am I done? Okay, okay, uh, um, sorry, I heard sound and reacted to it. Um, <laughs> So as, as I mouse over something, I could hear multiple uh, musical tones that explain something about what I'm actually touching at that moment. So that's the idea here. So what I'm trying to do is find heat maps of the ear. So heat maps break down quantitative data into easy to distinguish colors. So it's not so much tone in, uh, in the way that it's, you know, it's a C versus a B, et cetera, but it's more like, uh, because people can't hear these small intervals. So break these up into easier distinguished pitches. For example, low, medium, high, right? For example, uh, other dimensions are easy to break up. Short melodies, we already did the John uh, Williams thing with the, those little melodies. Different instruments, if a different instrument is playing a, a different melody, that's two dimensions that we can hear at a time simultaneously. Uh, left, right, and center. So if we hear it on the left, it means something. We hear it on the right, it means something. We hear it in the center, it means something. We hear all three, it might mean something else. Uh, so the stadium, the small room, and, and the no echo, these are three different dimensions. So we would break up and discretize the data into these ideas and then be able to simultaneously put all this information together. So that's what my research is about in the next two years. What different dimensions can people perceive simultaneously? So this is what I think, I can hear it, but I was a trained musician, so maybe the normal person's not gonna be able to hear this. So part of that is gonna actually be some research time and actually, hey, here's what this means, and I play this, can you tell me what that means? Uh, does it matter if they're a musician or not? Which is probably gonna be a big question. And then I'm gonna build a prototype tool to allow the configuration of different sonic dimensions. So once I understand what people can perceive, I'm going to build this tool that's going to allow them, people to come in and take their data and be able to sonify it. And then test the abilities of users to put together sonifications that are perceived by others. So actually when you give the tool, the tool to someone and then see what they do, actually help to see if that information is getting conveyed. So that's the idea there. Uh, if anyone's interested, this I'm just starting. I'm working on my comprehensive in the, this summer. Uh, if uh, that's my email address right there, dmerson at email.arizona.edu, or talk to me, I've got lots of cards. Um, if you're in any way interested in being a subject or have any other ideas, like I'm really early on this, uh, so if anyone has any ideas, I'm happy to hear them. I'm really excited to hear about them. So in conclusion, sonification is turning data into sound. Early experiments didn't use multidimensional aspects, and I'm looking to use heat maps of sound and researching people's ability to understand these multiple dimensions of sound. So that's my talk. Thank you.